There is one heaven where no unclean thing will be found. That's where I'm going. And I see you there. They tell me Tell me that it is written and it is correct. John chapter 10, verse 29. John is greater than all. Absolutely correct. No witch, no wizard, no herbalist, nobody can take you from the hand of God. Nobody. But the father can vomit you out of his mouth. It's not, it's not, it's not somebody coming to take you away from him now. He says, Revelation chapter 3, 15 and 16. Revelation 3, 15 and 16. Say, I want you to be either cold or hot. You are not mine. Yes, I like that. I will work on you to see if you can become mine. Or if you are mine, you are mine 100%. If you are lukewarm, he said, I won't take you. He said so. The Father himself can tear you away from Jesus. John 15, from verse 1 to 5. John 15, verse 1 to 5. I'm the vine. You are the branches. My Father is the husband man. Any branch in me that beareth not it away. My Father, not somebody else, not a demon. They say you can do whatever you like. Once you are born again, enjoy life. Be just. One of them said to a member of the choir that he had been committing adultery with. When that girl said to the used to do this thing before I became Every time I do it with you I feel unclean I should the pastor said there is a level of grace you don't know I don't know Greek. I don't know Hebrew. I never went to a Bible college. And in the English Bible, <laughs> and forgive me that I don't have uh, uh, translators, but the old I still like thou saith the Lord. You may say saith is old English. I like it is majestic. Chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. It says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you defile God will destroy you. I don't know any other meaning. And as we are going to hear now when I go to my real study, <laughs> our God. And if there's anything fire does, it does it very well. When fire burns, it burns thoroughly.
And then there is this advice that God himself gave the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when I confront these deep theologians, first they told me, I said, oh, no problem. Let's forget the Old Testament. What about things Jesus said himself? They said, anything Jesus said before he went to the cross. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, ma. <laughs> you know, I don't shout when I preach, but when this one is eating me up. Anything before the cross, forget it. That's what they say. I say, really? Because if I forget everything he said before the cross, then I will have to forget. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. I've gone to prepare a place for you. When I finish preparing a place for you, I will come again. I will have to forget that. Because he said that one before he went to the cross. 14, where he says, if I ask anything in his name, he will do it. At John 14, verse, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. If I am to forget everything before, then the Babalawi is going to be in heaven. Whether he gave his life to Jesus or not, it doesn't matter. Because, I mean, if Jesus said, I'm the way, and you say that is before the cross, then let's forget. But I even said to them, okay, I agree. Let's agree completely. Let's, for the sake of argument, let's agree that anything he said before the cross is irrelevant. What about the things he said after the cross? Because it was after the cross, after he rose from the dead, after he ascended to heaven, that he spoke to John, the beloved, on the island of Patmos. And he said, at least, even if it's only one thing he said there, Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Revelation 3, 11. Behold, I call as which thou hast. Let no man take your crown. Ah. If it is impossible for me to backslide, if it's impossible for me to miss everything, it doesn't matter what, then how can somebody else take my crown? How? Hey, you better hold fast. And be amazed, you'll be amazed that some preachers will take your crown from you if you allow them. And then, let me quickly conclude this one. Let me go on to what I really <laughs> wanted to talk on. When I was a younger Christian, when I was just became born again. I mean, you can imagine. <laughs> I was the only fellow you could say was educated in uh, the Redeemed Christian Church of God then. Well, to secondary school. And here comes Young 
lecturer in mathematics, my mind was always asking questions. I asked these questions from my pastors. I love them. But I know if I ask some of the questions, they will throw me out of the church. Questions like, is it true God knows the end from the beginning? If the answer is yes. Did he know that Adam and Eve will eat the forbidden fruit? If the answer is yes. Why did he plant it? <laughs> and he knew, he knew they would eat it. Why quarrel that they would do? Dangerous questions. But, but I just wanted to know. I was curious. Pastors, I ask God Himself. Daddy, you know I am not issuing a query to you. I just want to know. And thank God He answered me. That would be a topic for another day. <laughs> Because what you told me would take one hour, so that's the topic for another day. So when I suddenly found myself in the minority on this grace issue, everywhere I turn, it's all over the world now. I mean, and I don't need to begin to tell you the amount of damage that had already been done. Not too long ago, I was talking to some people in Britain, and, and, and as I was talking about some demonic manifestations in Nigeria, suddenly I had a feeling in me that someone was saying, ah, the demons in Africa must be terrible. And so I answered the fellow, I think the fellow must have been shocked. I said, you are thinking that the demons in Africa must be terrible. <laughs> I said, there are demons everywhere. And the demons in Africa, the only difference between the demons in Africa and demons in London is that the demons in Africa didn't go to school. <laughs> they are pure illiterate they are easy to identify when you say madman in Nigeria you, you see and you know but over there you can see a madman riding a Rolls Royce and so, I, so I gave them an example which is, which is relevant to my topic and that is the case of a pastor who ran away with the wife of his son because they were, he said they were in love. <laughs> and when they asked him, how could you justify this? He said, grace. I'm just giving you one example. There are several others. In any case, when I couldn't, when I found myself in the minority, I went to God like I did when I was a baby Christian. I'm still a baby Christian, just a little older. Lord, I don't know Greek. Lord, I don't know Hebrew. But at least I have a rough idea who you are. I know your holiness is not negotiable. Who you please 
give me a word for my own consumption on this EU. And he gave me Revelation 22, verses 11. 22, 11 and 12. I said, no problem. Uh, but daddy said to me, and because of the great love I have for you, I, I'm sharing it with you. He said, I'm coming quickly. Unclean. Let them continue to be unclean. Yeah. Do He said, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. So, um, if you think I've taken your time, forgive me. Um, and if you don't like me too much anymore, no problem. Uh, <laughs> As long as you get angry with me and you end up in heaven, that's fine. And the reason I decided I would take two lectures, because that, this one that I've given you is enough lecture. The reason I've decided to take two lectures in one day is because it is becoming clearer and clearer that my visit to you I might no longer be on a yearly basis. Um, <laughs> you've enjoyed this thing now since 1982. I think I don't try. <laughs> Judges 15. <clears throat> From verse 11 to 15, let the fire fall. Judges 15, 11 to 15. Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock Etam and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hands of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourself. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast, and deliver thee into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him off from the rock. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flasks that was burnt with fire, and his bands loose from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. Let the fire fall. Actually means let God intervene. Because Hebrews 12 verse 29, Hebrews 12 verse 29 says, Our God is a consuming fire. And in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 10, Exodus 3, 1 to 10, and hopefully we'll be looking at that one in some details tomorrow. When God came down, it was in the form of a fire that was burning in a bush and the bush was not consumed. In the text we just read, when the Bible said the Holy Spirit came mightily upon Samson, it says the ropes binding him got burnt because the fire of God 
might be invisible at times. But the fire is still fire. And when you read Daniel chapter 3 from verse 23 to 25, Daniel 3 from verse 23 to 25, when God intervened in the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, one fire swallowed another fire. So when we say let the fire fall, we are actually saying let God intervene. Consequently, when the fire falls, there could be different results for different people. For example, to those who are not committed to God or who are partially committed to him, like the Jews, the relatives of Samson, and to those who are completely uncommitted to God, when the fire falls, there could be frustration. Because in Isaiah 44, Isaiah 44 from verse 24 to 25, Isaiah 44, 24 to 25. This God who is a consuming fire says, I will frustrate the tokens of the liars. I will make the viners mad. I will turn wise men backward and make their knowledge Foolish. That's a, a dangerous statement because we are in an academic community. And that's why we have to be careful before we pray and say, God, let the fire fall. Because when the fire falls, a professor that says there is no God may get into trouble. Um, I, I'm sure you probably heard me mention a woman who, I think if I remember correctly, had six sons and all six were professors. And all of them didn't believe in God. When the poor woman died, for eight months, they couldn't decide on how to bury her. Because one professor said, the head must be facing the east. Another one said, no, the head should face the west. So that when the sun rises, it will be shining on her face. Another one said, no, 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 the head should be towards the north. Another one said, it should be towards the south. One of the wives said, what's wrong with you people? Bury this old fellow, I mean, this dead woman, let her go. They divorce her. God can make the viner smart. He can make the wise foolish. So when the fire falls, there could be frustration for those who are not on the side of God. Exodus chapter 1, verse 15 to 22. Exodus 1, 15 to 22 tells us about how Pharaoh wanted to kill the boys among the Hebrews. He told the midwives what to do. They failed to do it. He said they should begin to throw them again to the river and the devil was aiming at only one boy. But that boy ended up being trained in the palace. Uh, so when the fire falls, and it's going to fall this week, Amen. Uh, those who are after your life will be frustrated. 
In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to 12, 2 Kings 6, verse 8 to 12, the Bible tells us about a king that was trying to lay ambush for the king of Israel. And Elisha kept on telling the king of Israel, don't go this way. Because the Holy Spirit was revealing the secret to him. At the end of the day, the king of Syria became frustrated. Who among my people is a spy? <laughs> and they told him, there's no spy here. The spy is sitting down in his room, and everything you are planning here is being revealed to him. The king got frustrated. I have good news for you. When the fire falls, those who are planning to ambush you will be frustrated. Yeah. And we can go on and on. We can give you an example, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 14 to 24. Acts 5, 14 to 24. Uh, some people who arrested the apostles, put them in prison. The angel of the Lord came, set them free and told them to go on and continue to preach. When they sent soldiers to go and bring them and they found the doors perfectly locked and the prisoners had flown and then they heard that they were already in the temple preaching, the Bible said they wonder where this thing will go. They got frustrated. Anyone who is not going to allow you to fulfill your destiny will be frustrated. Amen. Now, when the fire falls, those who are not on the side of the Lord could die. It's a dangerous thing to say, God, send down your fire. Because on the day the fire came down on something, a thousand Philistines died. In Acts chapter 12, verse 18 to 19, Acts 12, 18 to 19, the king Herod wanted to kill Peter. God intervened. Peter was rescued, and the soldiers who were keeping guard were killed. In Acts chapter 12, verse 20 to 24, Acts 12, verse 20 to 24, Herod himself was eaten up by worms. And according to verse 24, the very word of God that he didn't want to spread grew mightily. In Exodus 14, verse 21 to 28, Exodus 14, verse 21 to 28, when God intervened, the Red Sea opened for the children of Israel, and those who wanted to take them back into slavery drowned. It might sound like a harsh kind of prayer, but anyone who will want to cause you to backslide, let me just say God will deal with the fellow. In the fire falls, and you leagues, they will be stricken with terror. Sorry, why? This is only 1,000 died was because the others fled. Samson. He became afraid of his. Verse 1 to 3, Judges 16, verse 1 to 3, they were told that they locked the gate. They said, we we'll wait till morning before we attack him. Why didn't they just go in and kill him? Because they were afraid. When he woke up at midnight, 
and grabbed the gate and began to shake it loose. What about those who were lying in ambush? They were paralyzed by terror. Uh, hmm. Let me leave prophecy to tomorrow. This one is Bible study. <laughs> but in Exodus chapter 12, verse 29 to 33, Exodus 12, from verse 29 to 33, the Bible tells us that when God intervened in that night in Egypt, the Egyptians were afraid. They begged the children of Israel to leave, go before we all die. Believe me honestly, before this week is out, <clears throat> all those who are beholding you down will beg you to leave. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, because I, I don't want to take this one too long, I know you need to go and study for your exams. Those who are on the side of God, when the fire falls, their yokes will be destroyed. Amen. Because the first thing that happened when the fire fell on Samson was that the ropes binding him were burnt. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, Isaiah 10, 27, makes it clear that the anointing will destroy yokes. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 19 to 25, Daniel 3, 19 to 25, the first or the only thing that got burnt when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fairy furnace was the ropes that bound them. In Acts chapter 12, verse 5 to 11, Acts 12, verse 5 to 11, when God intervened in the situation of Peter in prison, the handcuffs, everything binding his hand, binding his feet, got destroyed. The same thing happened in Acts 16, verse 25 to 34. Acts 16, 25 to 34. Many a times, a man or a woman does not succeed the way he should because there are unseen bonds binding his hand, binding his legs, or binding his brain. I have been a lecturer for some time. So I know quite one or two of my students who without doubt are very brilliant in class. But when they get to the examination hall, the brains will freeze. They just won't remember anything. And the moment they walk out of the exam hall, they look at the question paper and say, what's wrong with me? I know this. I understand. I mean, there might be one or two people here who can say, <laughs> we've seen something like that before. I don't want to be telling too many stories. But I know one of my sons who was earning a fantastic amount of money and salary. But at the end of the year, he will sit down and say, wait a minute, what did I do with the money? I don't drink alcohol. I don't womanize. I know how much I paid in tithe, how much I gave in offerings. What happened to the rest? And then he took my advice and decided to pray a prayer that... Uh, involves a little bit of violence. God, just let your fire fall. And the fire fell. And the house helped. 
a relation that was brought from home came to him and said, why all this fire, fire business? And he said, what's the problem? Because since you started this fire, fire prayer, my body is beginning to burn. How can your body be burning? Well, I have to confess. What is your confession? They told me at home to bring one of your caps. I took the cap. And if you want, I can mention the name of the town to, know, to tell you I'm not telling a fake story. They, they came from a village called Okeibo, somewhere near, on, I mean, on those states. So they took the cap, took it to one specialist in the other side. <laughs> and so as you collect the salary from here, it appears in the cap over there. Oh. Anyway, from that time onward, the money stopped disappearing. Whatever is binding your hand, binding your legs, binding your womb, binding your brain, shall be born this week. Yeah. When the fire falls on someone who belongs to God, then from that moment onward, whatever they touch will begin to prosper. And it became a weapon of mass destruction. In Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 8, Acts 3, verse 1 to 8, when Peter touched the lame man, suddenly the yokes binding the legs of the lame man was destroyed. His ankle bones received strength. Peter, who had never won a single soul to Jesus Christ, when the fire fell, he preached a sermon and won 3,000 souls at a go. I'm sure all the pastors here would love that one to happen in their ministries. When the fire falls, whatever you touch will begin to prosper. Uh, well, just a quick testimony. Uh, one of my children came through one of the elders here. Father was sick, and in their family, the father was at an age where people die. The father was in the hospital, and the boy said, ah, it looks as if my father is on the way out. Came through one of the elders. We prayed over an anchor chief. We said, take it to your father in the hospital and lay it on him. And the yoke will be destroyed. Whatever is causing death at that age will go. He took the anchor chief, went home, and while he was getting ready to come, to Ibadan here to lay the handkerchief on the father. The wife, who had a heavy cold, saw an handkerchief lying around on the table, <laughs> took the handkerchief and blew her nose, and the cold disappeared. Ah, this must be a very good handkerchief. So, but later on, the husband was looking for the handkerchief. Where is the handkerchief I'm taking to Ibadan? Because the father was here in Ibadan. And the wife said, which handkerchief? The one I brought from the camp. Oh, maybe that's the one I use. So they washed the mucus from the handkerchief and brought it to Ibadan. Thank God uh, water can wash away the anointing. <laughs> And the father lived for many years after. I'm praying for someone today, as the fire falls, everyone you touch will receive a miracle. 
You see, because when the fire falls on someone who belongs to God, the fellow becomes enveloped in power. He becomes wrapped up in the power of the Almighty God. In Acts chapter 5, from verse 14 to 16, Acts 5, 14 to 16, the Bible tells us that um, <clears throat> even the shadow of Peter was healing the sick. In Acts 19, verse 11 to 12, Acts 19, 11 to 12, the Bible said God performed special miracles by the hand of Paul. So from his body, whether it is handkerchief or aprons or singlet, that is taken to the sick, they all got healed. When the fire of God comes on you, anywhere you sit, there will be power there. Anywhere you walk, you'll be leaving anointing behind. Um, I have some people I call covenant partners who help me with the work of the ministry and I was holding the meeting with them in London uh, two years ago and they were quite uh, a bit few in number and I was feeling not too strong because it was after a long fast so I couldn't lay hands on all of them so I just told them Listen, I've been sitting on this altar for more than one hour without any doubt. A lot of anointing has been deposited on this altar. So if you want a touch of the anointing, just come to the altar, touch it, and go. A very good way of dodging lay hands on people. <laughs> But last year it was another time for meeting and there was testimony time. And one of the testimonies was that of a lady whose husband was dying at home, terribly sick. He came to the meeting, took an handkerchief, touched the altar, went home and laid the handkerchief on the husband. As she laid the handkerchief on the husband, the husband looked as if she fainted. She didn't know the man fell under the anointing. I said, oh. <laughs> Instead of the handkerchief healing my husband, the handkerchief has killed him. <laughs> so she phoned the uh, medicals and they came rushing with the ambulance. They arrived 15 minutes later. I said, what's the problem? Can't you see? Look at my husband. Check. So they picked the man up. They did all the emergency tests they should do. Check the heartbeat. Check this one. Check that one. I said, woman, why are you wasting our time? I mean, with so many people who are in need of help, you are calling us to come and attend to somebody who is asleep. <laughs> I'm praying for you too that after this week your chair will become anointed your bed will be anointed your handkerchiefs will be anointed <laughs> So we're about to pray now. But be careful before you call the fire down. Be sure your commitment to God is absolute. Because when the fire falls, Ananias and Sapphira may die. He didn't die because they committed adultery. They died because their commitment to God was incomplete. 
they sold a piece of land, their own land, and brought part of the money. And said, this is all. That's why they died. Please take the advice of the Most High. Make up your mind whether you are going to be all out Antichrist or all out Christian. Before the fire falls, let there be no lukewarm Christian left among us. And in case you are here and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, please do yourself a favor. Before we pray now, because the fire is going to fall. It's too late to stop it. <laughs> far, far too late. If the fire is not going to fall, I know what God would have done to make sure I don't come here. He has a way of making me unable to come. He could have said to me while I was in the prayer room, we are not going anywhere. And if he says so, then I would have stayed home. But since he didn't stop me, and I came, ah, the fire is going to fall. Yeah. But if you are here and you are not born again, and you are ready now to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, it's not too late. You can do so now. So that when the fire falls, it will be for your benefits, not for your destruction. Shall we please bow our heads now? In case there's anyone inside, outside, who will say, ah, okay. I don't want to toy with the consuming fire anymore. I'm ready to surrender my life to Jesus. Pastor, please pray for me that God may save my soul today. I'm not fooling around anymore. I want to give my life to Jesus. If you are inside here, you can come to the altar. If you are outside, you can just raise your hand where you are and I will pray for you. But you have only two minutes to do so. If you want to come to surrender your life to Jesus, just come. If you are inside there, come to the altar. Kneel before the Most High God and say, have mercy on me. Save my soul. If you are backsliding, if you have been deceived into thinking that once born again, you are born again forever, but now you have had the truth and you want to come back to the Almighty God to say, Lord, I am here to surrender my life to you completely. If you are inside here, you can come to the altar. If you are outside there, you just raise your hand and I will pray for your salvation. And the rest of us who are sure of our salvation, please intercede for those who are coming. Ask them Ask that the Almighty God will save their souls, that the Almighty God will have mercy on them, that God will restore every backslider to himself. Please let us intercede for our brothers and our sisters who are already coming to surrender their life to Jesus. And as you come, just talk to the Almighty God and say, Father, have mercy on me, save my soul, forgive all my sins, and I won't fool around with you anymore. I won't fool around with sin anymore. I will be yours now and forever.
And if you are outside, raise your hand and please do so. You have only one minute left before I pray for salvation. If you are inside and you want to come, come very quickly now to the altar and come and cry to the Almighty God, asking Him to have mercy on you and save your soul. If you are backsliding, and you've gone back to doing those things that you say you will never do again, come back to the Almighty God now. Let Him restore you into fellowship with Him. This is your day. Don't miss this opportunity. Oh, thank you, my Father. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Savior, I want to thank you for your word. I want to give you all glory and honor for these your children who have decided to come to you at last. You will know why God stopped. Jesus, mighty name, we have praised the Lord. Well, I rejoice with those of you who have come forward, and those of you who have given your Please fill the form they have just before you go. I promise you, I'll be praying for you. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for all those. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Okay. Now we're going to pray, brethren. And the prayer of this evening is not a prayer of joke. When I became a Christian, my cry to him right from the word go is that I don't want to be an ordinary Christian. I want to be a verse one to honor. I want to be mightily used of God. I believe that will be your own desire too. So we're going to stand and we are going to tell the almighty God or you are going to tell him loud and clear and say, Father, Father, thank you for saving my soul. For saving my soul. I, don't I don't want to be an ordinary Christian. I want to be enveloped with your power. Let the, Let the fire fall. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. I don't want to be ordinary, Lord God Almighty. I want to be a vessel to honor in your hands. I want to be enveloped with your power. Everywhere I go, 
I want to be a carrier of your power. Please let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall on me today. Let your fire fall on me afresh. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Thank you, Father. Let your fire fall. Almighty God, let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Thank you, my Father, my God. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Thank you for the fire that is coming. Rakundra Manki. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Jesus mighty name we have prayed before I say the closing prayer I want to advise you to take your offering now and lift it up to the almighty God because I want you to pray prayer with it and say Father From this moment onward, every devourer in my life, let your fire consume. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Every devourer in my life, everything that could be responsible for financial hardship in my life let your fire come down and consume let your fire come down and consume it right now right now 
right now Lord God Almighty every form of devourer in my life let your fire come down and consume it thank you my father thank you ancient of days In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Ancient of days, I bless your name. Thank you for today. Because this is just the eve of the mighty thing you are about to do on this campus. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you in advance for tomorrow. Please, Lord, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I'm praying that everyone here this evening will have a testimony before tomorrow. Amen. Let your fire fall. Amen. Let every yoke be destroyed. Let every enemy, particularly family enemies, be frustrated. Let everyone standing between this, your children, and the fulfillment of their destiny be destroyed. Let every yoke be destroyed. Empower your children. Amen. My Father, my God, I will be glad if, as a result of tonight, you multiply me through these children so that we have more than 10,000 people shaking the world for you. And any form of destroyer Bless them, Lord. Tomorrow, everybody will be singing a new song. Thank you, Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, over to the musician. Hallelujah. Awa dupe lawa jesu olore oruko jesu la firi reka. Oh, 